So today I wanted to make a review of about being a year and a half in Tbilisi, Georgia and my experiences here. Uh, today is one of my last days and I probably don't anticipate uh, returning um, for no particular reason. But uh, it's just likely not to happen. It's not in the plans, right? Uh, so I've been here one time before. Uh, to I was in the process of trying to invest into XRP uh, before the big boom came. And so over the course of somewhere between three to six months, I was trying to find a country outside of the United States to put money into cryptocurrency in. And I had a particular reason for not returning to the U.S. at that time. And so Tbilisi, Georgia uh, was the last place I tried. And it was the place where I was successful uh, due to the facility of the banking system. The banking system here is not only... Uh, the most fair, I believe, in terms of fees and, you know, all that sort of stuff, uh, but is also very easeful. It is a very useful. The bankers and the tellers are very helpful. Um, it doesn't take uh, the same amount of capital to make an impression. So putting $30,000 in a bank account uh, is significant. And I think uh, $30,000 is enough to get the higher level services that they kind of offer. I don't know if that's uh, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but $30,000 is, I think, the mark. And if you have that amount in your bank account, the tellers are uh, rather impressed by that, right? So they are, they are, no, they're just friendly. Uh, even the first time you just go in, they're helpful. And uh, anyways, that amount is impressive. Uh, so the banking system was very facile, and they had this thing called e-money and uh, a couple cryptocurrency uh, custody service sort of things here. And I got here, it was literally, I made the bank account, and I the bank account was a prerequisite to going to making the cryptocurrency account. And so... Uh, in the process of doing that, uh, when I made the bank account, the boom happened. So like I, for four or five months, was chasing the cryptocurrency thing, uh, which is no fault of Georgia. It's just how it worked out. Uh, so that's just some of my background to let you know that I have a significant experience of Tbilisi as a city. So after that, soon thereafter, I returned to the United States. Now, the context in which under which I came to Tbilisi, Georgia this time, is that at that time I had a little bit of a, uh, I had a bank account here with some money in it, right? And so after being in New Orleans for a year and a half, subject to psychopathic abuse uh, and torture and not having access to that money and eventually getting a little bit more money, uh, not what was promised to me on the basis of which I went back to the United States, but got a little bit of money, uh, which I was supposed to use uh, for business purposes, but the total amount being insufficient for what was planned for, it's gone toward... Uh, and also just having suffered a year and a half of extreme psychopathic torture in New Orleans. Uh, anyways, uh, so I returned to Tbilisi, Georgia because I didn't know what to do. And so I was sort of fleeing the country, not, not fleeing the authorities, but fleeing the country because Tbilisi, Georgia is rather affordable to live, right? It's very affordable. Uh, it's I've been staying in a hotel it's not the best hotel in the world, but it, it's clean. Uh, cleaning is offered. You can get cleaning every day if you want it. Um, it's it's fairly large room. Uh, the bathrooms are like uh, well done. You know everything is is workable. It's usable. You know it's 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 a room. It, it has it's spacious enough. I can I can exercise. I can pray. I can do everything I need to do. Right. Uh, the area isn't the best. I wouldn't be wanting to walk around outside of the hotel at two o'clock at night I wouldn't want to do that I come home around 11 to 12 o'clock at night sometimes and uh, I'm just cautious it's okay but you know it's not the best area it's kind of outside of the main city and I'm paying I think for a week 210 lari so 210 lari is about 70 a seventy dollars a week, right? And so I pay about uh, I would say ten to twelve dollars in food every single day, maybe up to fifteen dollars a day, 
uh, it fluctuates. Uh, one of the trade-offs of living in this hotel is I don't have access to a kitchen. There is a kitchen. They've been nice enough to let me use it, uh, but it's more of a staff kitchen, and I don't really feel comfortable cooking in there. Uh, so basically, my main use is to make coffee in there or some ramen noodles with some eggs or something, right? I don't really cook in there, uh, which works out, surprisingly enough, the ramen with the eggs kind of works out to the same as uh, going to get some food out here, right? So it's it doesn't really save you much money. Now, I've stayed in places like Airbnbs where there are kitchens in the apartment. And just because it's a nice experience to cook for yourself sometimes, like cooking pasta uh, with some, you know, nice cheese or, uh, you know, uh, some sauce or something, uh, it, it it's a little bit cheaper than eating out all the time, but not by much, right? Not by much. Um so uh, being here, I would say when I got here, because it takes you some time to adjust, uh, my living cost was uh, $1,500 a week. And that $1,500 uh, $1, a month, I'm sorry. And that $1,500 a month was uh, f food, uh, water, uh, rent, like everything you need, basically. And it was not... Um, in uncomfortable like that was uh without really trying to save a lot of money it was just like doing what i wanted to do uh 1500 a month is pretty good but then that's tbilisi as a city is kind of set up where like uh 1500 a month will is easy but it's not that easy to save more you know what i mean like it's not that easy to save money but i've managed once i found this hotel which I actually, I stayed here the first time I came to Tbilisi, but not for a very long time. It's not the type of place you really stay for a very long time. Uh, but, uh, you know, once I found this place and felt comfortable here uh, to stay here for a long-term stay and the hotel costs came down from like Airbnb is quite expensive compared to this. It's like uh, $280 a month, right? It's pretty good. So $280 a month uh, brought like my Airbnb be cost down from like four hundred dollars it saved me about four to five hundred dollars a month basically finding this place no there's i think there's other places like this around here uh but um uh i think uh, i've looked at them i've talked to some and they're quite more expensive compared to this place um so I think this is the cheapest you can get it. So staying here uh, with food costs now, it's about $1,000 a month is what I'm living off of. And that's what I've been doing for the past six months, right? Now that gives you some sense of the economics, right? And and I would say my, li my quality of life here is... Uh, you know, I'm not spending a lot on clothing. I'm not, I'm not shopping, you know, uh, but uh, in terms of, you know, eating out, having a coffee when it, I need it, uh, sometimes you need, to, you need to get out of this room and work somewhere else. Uh, you know, all that feels fairly comfortable for my situation, like the thousand dollars a month. Um, but in terms of let's now let's come to like people and society and sociology kind of that's kind of economics right uh i would say people here are going through a transition so the first time i came to tbilisi uh, there was a lot of racism especially toward uh you know a bearded muslim person that has faded significantly like it's because i came here only i think uh, three years ago or four years ago for the first time for about a month or something or a couple weeks and what i experienced at the airport and i have videos on this on this channel right uh the the airport i was strip searched for no reason um i was like you know forced to take off my boxers and like it, like for no reason whatsoever like really uh, it, and then like continuously there's racism um especially from like uh you know if you're going to a dunkin donuts or to a fast food place or a coffee place the type of person who's working as a barista who's uh maybe a little bit lower level uh in society is coming from the villages or you know is less educated they tended to have a very strong racism and they did whatever they could to convey that they didn't respect you right that was a very prevalent experience in my first time in tbilisi uh but only now it's only two or three years later and there's been a strong transition i think 
uh, you know, maybe I don't know if this is true exactly, but uh, when I got here it was right when they had started the visa program where anyone could come here for a year, basically, like uh, most countries in the world, I think, could come here for a year without a visa or getting a visa at the airport or something like that for a year and i think the money that came in from that and just the exposure to people from the out from outside and right now currently over the last couple months you know as things have opened up after corona uh there's a lot of middle eastern tourism and so if you go to the gloria jeans they have a halal sign like everything is halal or they have halal menus at gloria jeans which is an international coffee shop um uh at other places they have things like they they won't have pork in the kitchen they just won't have pork items, right? So this is sort of a Middle Eastern, uh, people are coming here um, for uh, for tourism from the Middle East. And I think that's one of the primary people who are coming here. And I think there is a, a somewhat like an understanding now. Uh, and also Georgia has good relationships with Turkey, which is uh, the neighbor to the West, right? Um there is some understanding that culturally there is a strong similarity between Georgian culture and maybe Middle Eastern culture, not in its superficial aspects, but like the deep structure, like the people can actually get along, right? Um, and it just over maybe the money coming in, I don't know what it is, but it's a very distinct transition. And it's not something I was looking to observe or notice, but over the last two to three years, there's definitely a strong transition away. I haven't experienced a lot of racism and especially in the younger generation, right? Uh, there is almost like a, um, I think the speaking the English, like the mandatory English education also makes a strong difference. Like younger people specifically, like if there's an 18, 19 year old kid who's a waiter or they make a specific effort, like to be overly nice to the foreigner. Right. And it's not fake. It's just like over enthusiastic, like young people can be over enthusiastic. Right. So it's like an over enthusiastic effort to be nice to the foreigner. Right. Um, and it's quite, quite endearing after having experienced like the racism at my, my initial visit. And so I would say Georgia, uh, for whatever reason, is quickly, trans especially Tbilisi as a city, is is quickly transitioning out, or if not having completely transitioned out of any sense of closure and uh, prejudice and racism. That's really, um, now that I'm leaving after a year and a half of living here, I've had some experiences even this year and a half, right? Um, there, so so I, I think I've focus, emphasized the positive, let me like reveal something some of the negative there is a, a sort of and everywhere has this right every eastern culture pre-modern culture has this right there's a strong identity with other georgians and so um if uh if there's some sort of even if it's like a micro conflict or tension that I have with, you know, someone's being rude to me or, I, you know, someone, I tend to be pretty nice to people, but if there's something that's happening, you know, as a social sort of tension, um, you know, a random Georgian might side with the other Georgian person, you know, I, I've experienced that, like, um, for example, um, there was this, I was coming home and at the subway station or the metro station, there was kind of like a street person who was, uh, you know, talking me up and chatting me up to try to get some money out of me. And, you know, I've traveled and so I know how this works. And so I'm, I'm kind of trying to shake him off. Uh, first I didn't have any cash on me and I'm just, I'm not really in a position to be giving out a lot of money right now. And so, uh, uh, I go to go make a purchase at like one of these booth things. That's like a convenience store booth type of thing. Right. And so this guy is very, uh, persistent. And so he's kind of like in the frame while I'm talking to the woman to get, get what I need. And he's really like just pushing at me and she sees that I'm sort of like averse to the guy. And so she, she says, even though I can clearly, she, she, she has the thing I'm trying to purchase right there. She tells me they don't have it and they run out of it. I'm like, it's right there. She's like, no, we don't have it. Right. And so it's like small things like that. It, it, can, it can, and it's not so often that it really affects your experience of being here. Um, but I've also experienced very fair minded Georgians. Right. So, uh, for example, this hotel where I'm living at, uh, it, it takes a certain, 
you know, you have to persist in a respectable character to earn the respect. But once the respect is there, it's very hard to uh, garner trust, right? It's like, um, it's pleasant enough, but like a trusting relationship over long periods of time where, um, like, for example, I've been here for six months and I'm always willing to pay my rent. I'm not you know, trying to skimp on the rent or anything like that, right? Uh, but uh, still, like, it, there's not a lot of trust, right? Like, if I'm like, look, I, I, I uh, you know, I've been paying weekly, now I'm going to pay monthly, and that's been working, but now that it's my last month and I'm about to leave, they want it to be weekly again, like, not trusting that I won't just, like, you know what I mean? So it, it, it's those sort of, which is okay, like, it's a commercial relationship, so it's not a big deal, but uh, it, it's, it's, it would be nicer to have a little bit more trust since I've been here for six months, you know? And so it's, like, uh, it, it's pleasant enough. People are friendly. Uh, I think if you come here in the next year, year and a half to two years, uh, you will find people to be very open. Um, while I've been here, I've been working on a legal case. So I've been researching, writing, uh, making videos, and uh, just spending a lot of time by myself because that's what I need to do right now. Uh, so I haven't been proactively going out and trying to meet people. Uh, but I believe that there would be a lot of receptivity uh, for people for, from foreign countries to do that. Like It feels like Georgia has opened up significantly just over the last three years. Uh, so my overall review of living here is if you are in a difficult situation like I was and you need to uh, go somewhere and get away from the from where you are for a year, year and a half, you need somewhere that's affordable, you need somewhere people are not going to be super aggressive toward you, and in fact might even be fairly friendly toward you, um, I would I would recommend Georgia. It's a good good place to go uh one of the but one of the things that's changing that might be disadvantageous is that um over the last when i came here i had the ability to be here for a year worry free right i could just be here for a year with with just the visa i came in with right uh but my uh uh but and then after corona hit they extended the visa they extended that process right uh but uh uh after um I'm sorry, uh, they extended the visa, but they've changed the policy where now you have to go out and you have to get an e-visa to come back. And I think it's a 90 day e-visa and there's a charge for it. That's that's I think a little bit more, 40 or $50. So now it's more of like a Thailand thing where, uh, you know, you're going to have to worry about coming and going. And I think it would be fairly affordable to make a trip to Armenia or a trip to Azerbaijan. There's a rail that goes to Azerbaijan, I believe. Uh, so it would be fairly affordable to do those things but you have to be concerned about that one of the things that was most pleasant for my experience here having lived in thailand previously is that just to be here it, it was fairly simple and there's no one really bothering you um i've had times where younger police officers who are kind of testosterone driven are uh you know trying to mess with the foreigner uh but uh I've also had very nice older policemen who are very respectful, very kind, uh, very decent people. And so it, it's just like one of those places that is in a sort of transition. It's transitioning from old world to new world. And I think it's doing it fairly gracefully and it's doing it fairly well. Um, and I would recommend it if you need to be someplace other than where you where you're at um, at about a thousand dollars a month you could do it for less than a thousand uh, if you're doing it long term I believe you could do it for five or six hundred if you got an apartment or something I think that might be a little difficult I haven't really looked into that because I was never planning on being here that long so um, I think you could do five to eight hundred a month. Uh, I've definitely done it uh, for, I think, a thousand. When I came here, I had very different expectations of life, right? I'm not someone who's had to be super budget before. And so I was kind of transitioning from two to three thousand dollars a month in the U.S. down to like, uh, you know, fifteen hundred, which was significant as a saving, uh, you know, but then I kind of geared down after a year. I was already like I would fluctuate during 
you know, I would, I would average about a thousand anyways, because when you're, you know, you're going out and then, uh, eating out and stuff like that, and then you cook for a month, you know, like it would fluctuate averaging about a thousand. But after I got this place where it was about 270 a month, I've consistently averaged less than a thousand for the past six months, about, I would say eight to nine hundred dollars, maybe even seven to nine hundred dollars, depending on the month. Uh, Anyways, so that's my review of Tbilisi, Georgia. If you're looking for a place to be, uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.